Well, so let's let's kind of um, look at this other angle of this, which is the way collaboration changes. We've talked about productivity gains, um, and we've talked about some of the quality metrics, um, and then the importance of the data underlying it. But another interesting finding that we've had is the way it affects collaboration. So um, there's this uh, old analogy, one plus one equals three. Basically, the idea is, you know, if Maya, you have an hour, and I have an hour, um, and we collaborate together, we'll produce something on average that's a better quality outcome than if you just had two hours, right? Or if I just had two hours. And that's the whole point of collaboration, right? You know, the sum is greater than the whole of the parts. Now there's some risks there, right? If we add too many people to that equation, the skills and expertise that we're bringing to the table that allows us to improve the quality, those diminish in value because there's, we're just not gonna maximize or utilize those skills and experiences. And so, you know, there's a, there's a cost as you scale collaboration. And and there's also a cost the second you have more than one person collaborating because what ends up happening is you have miscommunication, you have communication overhead and more. And so the reason we don't use everything, you know, the reason everything is not collaborative uh, in most organizations is because of those costs, right? Because it's not always the best uh, outcome. Um, and uh, from an ROI perspective, it's uh, return on investment, it's not as great. What's interesting is in the co-pilot experience, we're seeing two major shifts. The first one is that each individual has an agent or an AI, like a co-pilot. And so each person who's working with that, you know, of course is bringing their own experiences and skills, but remember they're also bringing all of the skills that the AI agent has, as well as the knowledge the AI agent has access to. So in that scenario, I'm able to do far more in a collaborative flow than I could ever do individually, especially when we talk about skills, um, digital skills especially, uh, and how these tools give us more capabilities. What's more is each person has their own co-pilot. So you might use it in different ways in the flow of collaboration. Like let's say right here, we're preparing, preparing an outline for an upcoming meeting. You know, we're providing additional details. We're adding some additional information to it. We're turning it into agenda. And each of those sequences, we're each using AI but we're using it in different ways, right? The other participant in this dialogue is using it to add content and pulling content from different data sources. Whereas here, we're using it to do a lot of formatting, a paragraph and then agenda work as an example. And so that sort of model of how we use it is important because it's both how we learn from one another, um, really, really powerful uh, learning from these uh, pilots with uh, you know, these uh, previews with Copilot is the way people learn together through this collaboration flow. But it also changes, uh, again, that, that value of outcome because now we're able to produce more. You know, one times AI plus one times AI equals maybe a lot more than three. The other thing that's interesting is that whole collaboration flow we just did can also be summarized, can be actioned upon, right? The data, you know, from transcripts to what activities happened, to even getting a sense of like, um, you know, taking this result and combining with another result of a different set of collaboration, all is wrapped around AI as well for use cases and potential. So when we see that, you know, again, 60% baseline, Copilot adds more, plugins add more, you know, you take something like uh, this effect on collaboration and it adds a compounding amount more, um, that's already really interesting uh, and worth thinking about. One of the interesting and early findings we've had is that there's a lot of this low value collaboration that happens in organizations where it's kind of transactional. You know, I say, I don't have the digital fitness skills. I'm not the best at searching, right? Across SharePoint or tools like that. So I'm gonna reach out to you and I'm gonna ask you to help me find something. Now that's a form of collaboration, but it's it's kind of transactional, right? It's it's low value. It's not like we're both using our experiences and skills. We're, I'm taking advantage of your skills and experiences because I have a deficiency in my own. And this isn't the only scenario like this. This happens with like, I need your help, you know, uh, compiling a PowerPoint presentation. I need your help doing X and Y. There's a lot of other skills where this comes up. And one of the things we've noticed with these co-pilot experiences is we've seen people shift some of that low collaboration, low value collaboration into co-pilot experiences. So you use co-pilot to do some of those actions for you, semantic search to give me the content I need, um, they, you know, helping me craft and format a PowerPoint presentation. I don't need somebody else's skills for that. So those are really great starting points. But when you scale that a little bit further, you start to see that what it does is it leaves more time and more focus on high value collaboration or brainstorming where humans, right, have more, you know, our experiences and skills have more room to flourish and have an impact. And so um, that's a really good thing, I think, for organizations because we have these big obstacles to productivity and most of them revolve around meetings. 
And um, in our data uh, and analysis, we found most of those inefficient meetings and having too many meetings, et cetera, is actually stemming from this low value collaboration. So the more we can offset that, the better. This also brings up why it's so important to think about numbers and data. You know, here we're talking about analytics um, for a lot of the rest of the day. And when we talk about analytics, it's really important to understand that without being able to look at this, right, from the right lens, you might just settle on, oh, it's great and people can use it. We might be missing the fact that it has other consequences as people use these tools, as adoption climbs, that we should tune and augment and nudge. And there's some groups that maybe really benefit from this who have high digital debt or who have a lot of that low uh, value collaboration going on, that maybe those groups should be one of the first targets for you know, co-pilot licensing or things of that nature. So, you know, AI will lead to higher productivity and quality, but prioritizing the data quality, prioritizing security, sensitivity, compliance, right? The right uses, which uses should we focus on first? Because there's just too much, there's too many opportunities. And this is only going to increase over the coming months as more and more features and capabilities come to market and more organizations like Microsoft and others learn how to use Copilot within the flow of work. It's going to make it harder and harder for us to keep up. So we need to make sure we're starting to build those muscles early for figuring out what are the right priorities and what's the right rollout strategy.